So uh, when I've uh, go gone back and thought about uh, 25 years I spent in, in uh, developing and starting up companies and running those companies, and the last 15 years that we spent in angel investing and thinking about the attributes or the specific goals of a CEO, from my perspective, they fall into three major buckets. That's developing the strategy and the vision of the company, being able to sell that to all the stakeholders that are, that are affiliated with the company, also being the top salesperson within the organization. So one of the things that we advocate for in our entrepreneurs is if you haven't had sales training, go out and get a class. Uh, go, uh, uh, read, read a book, but do something to get some sales skills to help you sell yourself and the company. And then, of course, that third major bucket is in selection and development of a world-class team. And we've already talked about the consequences of not hiring a great team. I included this quote from Jack Welsh, if we don't get the people thing right, we lose it. It's the most important thing in all of our businesses. And I think if you go back and look at those companies that you've written off, and I know we do this on an annual basis, the common theme that we, that we see is that we really bet on the wrong team. It was a team of people that really couldn't execute according to the business plan. And we couldn't make adjustments quick enough to uh, change the business. So also lessons learned in this whole process. And if you look at these, uh, you can see that they're largely around having the right uh, team of people in place. One of the things that I discovered early on, and it's with the last company that I ran was, I, I didn't want to take the title of president or of CEO of the company because I didn't understand what a CEO did. So I did, I did think I could be the president, so I put president on my business card. And after a few years, I ended up joining an organization called the Executive Committee, which is now known as Vistage. And I spent 10 years in that organization learning about all of the strategic decisions that a CEO has to make in order to have a, a successful company. And the other thing I learned in that whole process was <clears throat> as a startup entrepreneur or, or the founder entrepreneur, as that company continues to grow, the CEO has to be able to grow with the company and essentially more from an entrepreneur CEO to a manager CEO. Otherwise, there's gonna be changes and you'll see some data in a moment how important this is to the CEOs that we bet on. Just a real quick and a simple example, as I, after I joined tech, we had this uh, consultant from Chicago come in that was gonna train us on a process to select the best people. We have 15 CEOs sitting around the table. The first question he asked is, how many of you have an accounting system? So how many hands do you think went up? All 15, right? Second question he asked was, how many of you have a hiring system? How many hands do you think went up? Zero. Zero. But in reality, all 15 people had a hiring system, right? They just didn't think of it as a system, nor could they articulate what the system was. And then, of course, he went through this whole process. Well, the third question he asked was, how much time do you spend hiring people? In our group of 15 CEOs, the answer was from 20 minutes to two days. So it's kind of mind-boggling to me to think that a CEO could spend 20 minutes or an hour or two and pick the right kind of people to bring into his or her organization. So we went through this whole hiring process. I'm not going to walk you through it. You can look at the slides. But... Uh, one of the key things that we learned in this whole process was if we're going to hire a especially a senior level person in the organization, develop that roadmap of what we expect that person to do in the first 90 day period and the first one year period. And that uh, has a couple of benefits. One is it's a, it's a roadmap for the person to know what we expect them to do when they come on the job. And secondly, it's something that we can look back on after they've been with the company for a, a, a appreciable period of time and decide if we're meeting the goals and objectives. So it's an easier way to assess how, how, how well they're actually executing in their job. And one key point I'll make on this slide, after we'd been through that whole interview process, uh, we ended up with the final candidate or couple of candidates, and then we used an industrial psychologist to help us do a final assessment on that person. In most cases, it came back and it, he reaffirmed the person that we had selected for the job. But in a few cases, it came back, he un had uncovered this point, that point, and it was something that caused us to make another decision on the person that we were going to hire to put in that position. And you can do these things. These are all tools that are available to your CEOs at a fairly nominal cost and uh, a three or four hour period of a person's time, and you can learn a lot more about the candidate that you're about to, to hire. Of course, the benefit to the CEO is lower turnover, matching people to the 
better, better uh, to the job and the, and the expectations for what you expect them to accomplish in the company, and you end up with a stronger team. And even those people that got a rejection felt like they had been given a proper vetting and had a lot of respect for the company because of the way we tended to, to vet the people. I'm going to skip this slide, but it's a lot of tools that we can use with our CEOs to help them do a better job of sourcing and hiring people, getting the salary thing right, getting stock option programs right for the company. I know John Houston talked about that a little bit earlier in his session. And then uh, I mentioned a moment ago the importance of, of, of morphing from that founder CEO to the manager CEO. And this is some data that I found uh, especially those companies that have venture capitalists that have provided that follow-on round of capital. If you, uh, and we're basically betting, <clears throat> betting on these companies because we believe in the founder. But if you look at what happens when the v VC comes in, and if you look after three years, four years, five years, we're down to fewer than 25% of the CEOs that actually retain, retain their job out to the IPO. And some really harsh cases up to 95% of the CEOs are replaced when the VCs come in. You think about the added risk that's introduced in the company when that kind of decision is made, I think that's something that, uh, that we want to try to de-risk the company and make sure that we've, been, that we've bet on the right CEOs. So before you came to this meeting, uh, ACA uh, sent out a, a survey. We're much appreciative of the folks who actually responded. For the four questions that we had on the survey, we had 39 responses. I want to give you a little quick feedback of what you said relative to the questions. One of the quest first question was, do you have tools or processes to evaluate the skills of the CEO? 21 groups out of 39 said no. Of the 18 groups that said yes, some, these are some of the tools that they used. Super Decision, LinkedIn, Culture Index, which we're going to hear more about in just a moment. One of the comments that came back, this person said no. That said, this is probably what my angels pay the most attention to. The second question we asked you to answer was, do, uh, whoops, uh, I left out the word you, do you have tools to assist a portfolio company in hiring a new C-level manager? In this case, we had 32 of the 39 groups reporting no. Seven said yes, and again, the culture index is one of the tools that they used. A couple of comments here, no, but wish I did and used LinkedIn and their personal network to help source people for their companies. The third question we asked you to answer was, do you have tools to evaluate uh, CEO annual performance? 28 groups said no, 11 who said yes, use milestone-based uh, board level reviews or annual and quarterly updates, and in some cases, 360 reviews and a self-review of the person in terms of how well they're doing. Comment here, we conduct an annual portfolio evaluation, which includes the review of the CEO's goal metrics and how he or she has performed against those metrics. And then the final question we ask you to answer was, do you have a program to help the CEO increase their skill set? 35 out of 39 groups said no. But uh, one group said yes, uh, four groups said yes, and one group used Ad Hoc 101 to help build their skill set. But I found it interesting that one of the groups actually uh, had developed a series of educational programs that they offer their angel members to help uh, uh, train them on the skills that they need to do a better job in running their portfolio companies. <laughs>